Um, hi everybody, my name is Courtney. I am a senior in the Question School of Business and my project is operational efficiency and operating room turnaround looking specifically at the East Newton Pavilion of Boston Medical Center. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about Boston Medical Center. Um, it's more than just the place you end up at if you take the BU bus too far. It's the teaching affiliate of um, BU and it's a private not-for-profit not academic medical center. Um, it is New England's largest safety net hospital, has a large trauma center, and they have three primary operating rooms. They have East Newton Pavilion, Menino Pavilion, and Moakley Pavilion. And so I focus specifically on East Newton Pavilion. So why is operational efficiency important? The operating room is generally the largest revenue and cost generator of the hospital. Um, but it's really hard to quantify these costs Administrators usually use an estimate of 15 to 20 dollars per minute, but that can obviously get a lot higher depending on the complexity of the surgery, how many personnel are involved. Um, so the goal is really of operational efficiency in the OR is to reduce non-billable time. So you can only bill a patient for the time they actually spend in surgery. You can't bill them for the time you spend setting up or all the other things you do. Um, so BMC has recently started a couple of initiatives to improve efficiency in the OR. The first was their first start initiative, which was increasing the amount of cases that started on time at the beginning of the day to reduce the amount of delays over the course of the day. The next is their room turn turnover initiative, which the goal is to reduce um, the amount of time it takes to turn a room around. So room turnaround is the time it takes a hospital to turn the room around between one surgery and the next. And um, at BMC, they use wheels out to wheels in. So turnaround is from the moment a patient is wheeled out of the room to the moment the next patient is wheeled into the room. And some other hospitals use closed to incision, so the moment the last surgery's um, wound is closed to the moment the doctor makes the first incision on the next patient. So turnaround begins when the circulator nurse calls for the perioperative team to come clean up the room. Uh, they come clean up the room, and when they leave, that prompts the nurse team to come in and set up for the next case. And then afterwards, that prompts the patient to be wheeled in. And there's usually a bit of wait time in between the end of cleanup and the beginning of next wheels in. So in July 2015 at East Newton Pavilion at BMC, the average turnaround time was 62 minutes, which as you can see by this industry dashboard is very poor. Um, their goal now is to reduce it to 40 minutes per turnaround. So this is just a set of photos. On the left hand side, you have a room that has not been cleaned yet. The staff has called for cleanup and on the right side, same room, different angle, but it has been cleaned up and set up for the next procedure and they're waiting for the patient to be wheeled in. So my research design was split into two parts. I did secondary research, which consisted mainly of attending the National Operating Room Management Conference in Vancouver, thank you KHC, um, to listen to industry specialists and talk about initiatives in the area of operational efficiency in OR room management. Um, I did an interview with the administrative team that is working on efficiency at UC Davis, and I chose UC Davis because they have been working on operational, operational efficiency in the OR for about five years now. BMC just started this last year, and they're also a teaching hospital. So I thought there would be some good parallels between the two, and then industry articles and reports. My primary research consisted of two parts. The first was data that BMC gave me that their information systems collected so that I could analyze it. And the second is observations where I went in and watched rooms be turned around. So this is an analysis of my turnaround data. Um, the period of data that I had was from the beginning of August to about mid to end of February because that's all the data they had. They hadn't started collecting data on room turnaround until August, and the mean turnaround time was 50.41 minutes. Uh, and that was broken up into an average cleanup time of about 19 minutes, average setup time of 21 minutes, and an average wait time of 11 minutes. So you can see the turnaround time breakdown by percentages. Um, they actually spend 21% of their turnaround time waiting for the patient on average to be wheeled in to the surgery. And I looked at a lot of different factors and how they impacted turnaround time. 
So turnaround time varied a lot depending on the time of day. Turnarounds were statistically significantly statistically significantly shorter at the beginning of the day versus the end of the day. Um, they were also shorter at the beginning and end of the week versus the middle of the week. And for some reason, turnaround time was shorter in the months of January and October versus all other months. Um, it depended on the location and the procedure. There were certain rooms that just on average had longer turnaround times, and that might be because some rooms are set aside for cardiovascular surgeries or thoracic surgeries, which are more equipment intensive and so require more cleanup and setup. Uh, they also depended on personnel. If the same doctor was following a case um, prior, so one doctor and then the same doctor followed in the next case, turnaround time was shorter, and that might be because the same team would be working the whole way through. So I can't show you any photos of my observations because of HIPAA. So here are a bunch of photos of me doing the observations. Um, <laughs> when I went into the hospital, I, I watched from wheels in to wheels out, recorded all the tasks that were done, um, recorded comments on what staff was saying, what they were doing, and what processes were being done, and um, also recorded the number of unique personnel. And then after that, I transcribed all of that data and looked for overarching themes. So now I'm going to talk about some of the recommendations that I'm giving BMC. My recommendations are broke down, broken down into three main parts. The first is process improvement. Um, the first point in process improvement is training staff to call for turnaround or to turnover immediately. Often in my observations, I would see the circulator nurse wouldn't call for the perioperative team to come clean up the room until sometimes up to five minutes after the patient had been wheeled out. And that's just excess time where the room is sitting there dirty, not being cleaned, um, and not being turned around that could be reduced. Uh, they could actually even have institute processes where the nurses call for turnaround before the patient has been wheeled out to ensure that the perioperative team can come in immediately. The next is to display equipment needs on the information systems in the computer um, in the room. There's a computer in every room where staff can see information about the next patient coming in. And I want to have doctors, when they are scheduling cases, specify exactly what equipment they need. Often you'll see confusion among both the nurse team and the perioperative team who are supposed to bring in the equipment about what equipment is staying in the room, what needs to be removed, and um, what's needed for the next case. And by having that displayed on the computer, that could reduce that confusion and increase um, efficiency. Next, I wanted to standardize cleaning, the cleanup process. It's not standardized at all. You'll get a lot of variation in the number of personnel that come in and clean up who does what task and what task can be done simultaneously. So I want them to take a look at the exact tasks um, that are being done and streamline that process. And then I also want to improve out of room communication. You would see delays in wait time, largely because either surgeons didn't know that their room was ready or the patient hadn't even undergone anesthesia yet, or they were waiting for an interpreter or something like that. And so by having automatic updates sent to out-of-room <coughs> personnel, they could improve efficiency and turnaround. The next section is culture improvement. So I want turnaround data reported in real time. There is a computer screen in the waiting area of the OR where most of the perioperative team spends their time when they're not cleaning up room that could be used to display turnaround time to give them more of a sense of ownership and motivation when it comes to improving how fast they turn the room around. Uh, I also want to reduce downtime. Perioperative team spends most of their time sitting around. You only really spend about 15 minutes cleaning up a room, and the rest of the time you sit there and wait for the next procedure to be done. So by having them do tasks out of room, they could increase motivation and more. they would have more workflow. <laughs> And then I want to allow perioperative input into the process streaming that I talked about in process improvement because that will allow them to be more enfranchised and feel like they have ownership of the process and be more motivated. And then my next recommendations are for further research <coughs> into um, the differences that I found statistically in turnaround depending on times and room and then what the optimal number, optimal number of personnel per team would be in each turnaround so they can standardize that. Some of the limitations of my project were that I did convenient sampling observations. Obviously, I had to work around my school schedule, and I could only go observe turnarounds on Mondays and Fridays during specific times, so those may not be applicable to all turns. Um, I had to delete data points 
casewise and pairwise deletion because there were some data points where it said cleanup was negative 200 minutes. And um, I'm assuming nobody went back in time and cleaned the room up, so I just deleted those data points. I also saw a mistake in recording data. Uh, when I went in for my observations, I saw people record wrong data, so there's a chance that that's affecting all of my results. And then finally, industry research, industry research shows, shows that there may not really be any benefit of imp improving room turnaround because unless you improve to a point where you can add another case on at the end of the day, you're just gonna have excess, excess time at the end of the day. So, thank you. <laughs> So when the perioperative team begins cleanup, they click in the computer that they begin, and when they're done, they click that they finish. And the same, the nurse team does the same thing. You see, a lot of times people would just forget to do it, um, and they do a real quick click. So I got some things that said it took a minute for them to clean up, and I figured that was probably somebody going, "Oh shoot, like next person come in." Um, and in some cases, some people actually even asked me if I'd recorded the time. I said, do you know how long that turnaround took so that we can just input it into the system and people could go back in later and just record how long it took? So. Did you see any problems with like waiting for sterile equipment to come in? Because they have to replace a lot of it for each different patient? Um, not really. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So you said turnaround time is only one method, method to reduce operational efficiency. What are other methods? Um, so first start is a good one. So is um, readmission rate. So seeing how often people come back in after they've had a surgery done and how they, um, whether or not it was actually effective because you'd rather not have you, your patient be readmitted. Um, there are a couple more that I can't remember right now. <laughs> I'm just curious, I, I mean, so that, that's a really important point about the uh, about people who are having to return after uh, one of the operations, but I'm wondering about the regimentation. I mean, a lot of physicians complain about the way in which uh, insurance companies really, and, and whatever their healthcare provider organization is, want them to see patients almost on the assembly line they queue to very specific standards for the amount of time they're allowed to, to see patients. So I'm wondering what kind of pressures there would be on the oper operational team them to get in and to get out. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of room to actually prove all yeah. of this, but do you think we're getting kind of cultural backlash then? Um, I think no, just because the the surgeons aren't actually really involved with room turnaround. So it's um, it's the perioperative team and the nurses. So by motivating them to hurry up doesn't actually impact quality of care when it comes to the surgeon doing the operation. And the point is they would have an actual state in the whole thing? Hmm? They would have stayed in front of the Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs>